I got to a point, I remember early on, I was just like so nervous to do this, to, the, to walk up to a stranger in, in a casino in Las Vegas and say, hey, I think you're interesting. I'd like to photograph you. That was the first one I did. And then by the end, I was like, I remember I wanted to photograph the Hells Angels, uh, the motorcycle gang up in uh, Oakland is like their main headquarters. And uh, I just flew up to Oakland. You know, you can't really arrange that. You can't call them up on the phone and say, hey, I want to do a, I'm a photographer in L.A. I want to photograph you guys. That's just not going to happen. So I, uh, I just flew up there. And I, uh, it was a morning. And <laughs> I ring their buzzer at their headquarters in Oakland. And uh, no answer. It's like 9.30 in the morning. I ring it again. Nobody answers. I ring it a third time. And somebody comes. Oh, this, this junkyard dog of a biker opens the door and says what the fuck do you want <laughs> and i'm like well I'm, i start telling him he just slams the door in my face he goes fuck off and he sh sh slams the door like that didn't go well but I've, I've done this so much now that i'm so good at it that i knew to give him some time allow him to say no i'm not going to force i'm not going to pressure him went across the street there's a mexican restaurant that was serving breakfast i got breakfast for a bunch of guys and i brought it over and i, I Bring it again. He opens the door, and I had breakfast for him. And uh, eventually, they let me in, and we chatted. And I eventually photographed uh, the uh, the president, the, uh, the the head of that uh, chapter, uh, Cisco Valderrama, and Flash. And uh, this guy's name was uh, Marvin. And it was, it was a great portrait. I'm proud of it. And, you know, it was like I, it, I made that happen because of my ability to just go up to anybody, killers, anybody. And just walk up to him and say, hey, I like, this is what I like to do. Did you ever read Hunter Thompson's book on the Hells Angels? No. It's really good. Not bad. It, that was his breakthrough book. And uh, he was embedded with the Hells Angels and hung around with them for long periods of time. No, it's and, a hell of a lifestyle. Yeah. And that's sort of where he invented that sort of gonzo journalism mm -hmm. aspect. No, I, I, lo I love that kind of... Um, uh, William Volberg is another author that's kind of like that. I, I love Bill Volver Volberg's work. Um, where it's just like you, you immerse yourself into these really fucked up, dangerous situations. Yeah. And you come out with gold or you get killed or shot or Ooh. knifed or whatever. That is a fear of yours. For, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've been robbed so many times on Skid Row. I've had, you know, I came around the corner once and there's a gun to my face. And it's like, fuck. But you still do it. Yeah, I still do it. Uh, d did you feel when you were doing advertising, uh, advertising is so strange, right? Because it doesn't bother me. You know, and I, I have this sort of relaxed attitude on certain things. Like, well, that's not going to trick me. You know, some guy's talking about the hollow earth. Well, that's not going to trick me. That doesn't bother me. But when you think about the overall impact of what it's doing, it's giving people – it's sort of like the, the part of the big problem that people have with social media is it creates these unrealistic expectations, and then it also has people comparing their life – to what they see in advertising. Yeah, advertising and social media are kind of following yeah. the same. Well, this is the main pattern. concern with uh, advertising of pharmaceutical drugs because it's all people having the best time, mm -hmm. like at a picnic, uh, running through a wheat field, and like you, this could be you. Why isn't this you right now? Mm -hmm. This could be you if you just do this thing or take this thing or buy this thing. That's the manip manipulation of advertising. And what did that feel like when you were a part of that? Did you, you were I'm, acutely aware of it? I'm part of it. Yeah. I'm part of the, that process, and I hated the feeling of that after a while. Initially, it was great. When I first started doing Apple, I was so proud of myself. Right. And, I, and I'm still proud of my career. I, I love what I did in advertising, and I'm, I'm so proud of that work. But I have to admit, as I got older, it started feeling really like I'm tricking people. Mm. I'm tricking people, and I'm, I'm not cool with that. It just it didn't sit well with me at the end of the day. I'm just like, so that's how I made my money. That's that's how I've that's how I spent my life on this planet. And I just wanted to do something that mattered. Do and you that, think that advertising should be regulated, or do you think we should leave that up to people or educate people on the effects of it the same way people are trying to educate people on the effects? Of social media and what it what it does to people's mental health when you compare these unrealistic lives to yours. I mean, it it, it comes down to greed. It's human greed, corporate greed. They, they, they want what they want, and they're going to get it by creating these ads that are just better than life. You know, just so amazing. Everything's your, your life will be perfect if you 
drive this car, if you buy this, pro, you know, this phone, this, uh, take this drug, whatever. I even wonder if in this day and age that's necessary with what I feel like today more than ever because of social media, because of like people that actually review things and talk about things on social media, honestly, without, you know, bias and without being paid to do so, you can do stuff and sell stuff and it just has to be good mm -hmm. like look at teslas for instance they don't even advertise they don't and it's like the number one car in america yeah it's just because it's great it's that same obviously there's, there's a lot it's there's connected a... to elon musk who's this in, enormous figure but it's a much smarter way to market a, a, yeah. a product it's not deceptive elon could come out with a running shoe or a, anything yeah a, a drink and people would drink it when you first started doing these videos, did you have to figure out a way to balance your own mental health with interviewing these people? Because I got to tell you, like, I watched a bunch of videos today in the gym while I was working out, and I felt like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I well, always I mean, feel it, good it, after it, I work well, out. I know it affects people in different ways. Some people yeah. make, like, oh my God, my problems are not so, so bad. My life is pretty great. I've, I've heard that many times. I've heard that more often, but I get what you're saying because, like, I'm immersed in it. Yeah. You know, what you see on my on my YouTube channel is 1200, maybe 1300 videos. I've done over 5000. Because I, not not everything I shoot like with you, you're shooting you're doing interviews with uh Elon Musk and Dave Chappelle and you know, Huberman and they're and they're great. You know they're going to great. They you don't need to do 8 or 10 in a day like I do. Right. Like I'll I'll do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in a day hoping to get one. Or two. But even the ones that you have where the people can barely communicate, they, they're almost more disturbing. Mm -hmm. Like I watched uh, a couple today of homeless people Yeah. where, you know, there was this one woman, she was missing one of her toes and, you know, that woman. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's just the movement and the, the, the mental health, the, the obvious signs that she's very troubled and probably on some drugs. And it's just. Yeah. Do you have children? I do. I have two daughters, 19 and 22. Yeah. So that, to me, was like the, the hearing the stories of how they were all abused sexually and physically when they were children and and seeing what it leads to. Right. Leads so I'm, so I, I'm aware that these th things go on. Yeah. I've been, I've been down on Skid Row for 12 years now, maybe 13 years. And... So I know what's going on. Do you live on. down there? No, 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 no. I, I live in Pacific Palisades, which is like the exact opposite. <laughs> yes. 